Um, if you are here to get expert advice on non-metallic metals, that ain't me. And that still ain't me. But what I can do is help you maybe figure out some ways to practice and improve your NMM. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. Bear with me for a second. A week or two ago, I was at a recital of one of the young ladies in our Ukrainian community, and she was giving her Masters of Musical Art recital at a local college here. And it was pretty extraordinary. Plus, she played Brahms, and Brahms always wakes me lose my shit. But it was pretty extraordinary watching her just play amazing music with great passion. And I was struck by her story. She started playing at about 10. I think she's around 24 now. And just that tremendously disciplined hard work that she put in and, you know, got me thinking about my own progress in how I learn and how I take on really hard things. And for me, one of the really hard things is non-metallic metal. NMM is tough. There's a lot of things that are really intricate and detailed about it. Um, there's multiple lighting considerations that you need to take into account. There's the type of metal. There's the texture of the metal. There's the surrounding environment. And as I've talked about in my learning video, which I'll put a link to here, you have to take big complex things and break them down into smaller pieces. And you have to get the reps in. Doesn't matter if it is working on learning piano or learning how to throw a jab punch or working on lifting weights or any number of things like my guitar that's over there in the corner that I haven't picked up literally in a couple of years. Anyway, I'm off on too many tangents. This video is about me working on a great little bust to practice a couple specific parts of NMM to try to get better at a few things. I didn't go in full bore. There were some things that I consciously left off that I wasn't going to work on. So that's what this is all about. Right from the start, there were a number of things that I wanted to focus on and some things that I was consciously going to leave off and not fool with. Uh, I was trying to kind of minimize in um, what I was dealing with. So I wasn't going to worry about secondary or environmental reflections. <coughs> I wasn't going to worry about like some of the finer detail on the helmet. wasn't going to worry about the figure's hair. Instead, I wanted to focus on specific light. I wanted to work with hard cast shadows and a distinct terminator. And the biggest thing was just getting the reps in on smoothing the transition between the the bright highlights and bringing that around through the mids and, and the shadows. That was really the main goal. It's an important part of your practice, focusing in. NMM's hard. There's a lot of stuff. Make the world smaller. On this bust, I really wanted to try to have a pretty minimal set of colors. I can't remember if it was Vince V or someone else, but I saw a very limited palette, and that's what I wanted to play around with. So you can see that the majority of this work is going to happen only with the P3 coal black and the AK pastel yellow. Um, I'll use the pastel blue for a little bit of shading and then the bold titanium white for the utmost highest highlights. I think it's really important when you're working on a piece like this to have a really good understanding of how light hits and you know where it falls on the piece. So I regularly turn off all of the lights at my workstation and use this very bright little pocket flashlight that I have. Uh, and I'll get a picture of how the light hits so that I have a road map. I've talked about this before, but it's really helpful because this gives me the exact map of here's where the light needs to hit. Here's where your shadows are. And in this piece, I wanted to work really hard on a um, very distinct cast shadow with a dark, heavy, sharp terminator on it. Uh, 
And so all of that work on getting that picture was a big help for all of this. Now it's time to get to work. I'm using that coal black from P3 and you can see in the video that it's got a bit of blue to it. And that was intentional. Again, I wanted a bit of blue in the color tone. And you can see here I'm setting that reference photo right next to my workspace. And I'm just going to use that as a guide on where I need to lay out the blackest of blacks here. And so this is just a matter of blocking in all of those spaces. Something I've found really interesting, and I like this flow when I'm doing NMM, is to do the extremes. Do the deep shadows first, and then get the highlights in, and then fill in the space between that, the tones, whatever. So here I've jumped straight up to that AK pastel yellow, and I'm sketching in the places where I think the biggest parts of the light will hit so you know that's the tops of pieces it's the bottom edges that'll catch that light um, some of the places that'll catch secondary reflections but I've enjoyed practicing at this and the way that it makes me think about the lighting problem on the surface metal Now I'm starting to get in some of the middle tones here. So I'm using that pastel blue. I'm using it straight. I'm doing a bit of blending at points with some of the titanium white. But what I'm trying to do is build in the steps between the utter highlight and the pure dark. So I'm using the straight paint. I'm using it thinned down as kind of a heavy sloppy glaze. All of this work right here at the moment looks ugly that's part of just the process um, you know there's always a point where there are many points where your figure just looks like complete ass trust the process just work through it uh, and by the way I tell this to myself all the time as I'm working on this so yeah just starting to build in those middle areas with again pure paint and then you know, a thick glaze. So here I'm back to working on sort of the extremes. I decided that that coal black wasn't doing it for me. Uh, that blue tone's lovely, but it wasn't dark enough for the absolute biggest shadows. So I used some Vallejo to really ink in the absolute dark. And then I'm going back and I'm just working a bit more on some of the highlights and continuing that process of, you know, paint a little, glaze a bunch, work out and smooth the transitions. Every once in a while, it's important to stop and check your work. Sit back and take a look at how things are going. In this case, I'm trying to double check how I'm doing with the angle of light. And I'm using my paintbrush as an angle indicator. I'm going back to my reference photos. 
stop what you're doing, go back and look at your plan, see how you're doing with your plan, and adjust as necessary. Based on what I saw from looking at the reference photo and, you know, some careful reevaluation, I decided I didn't have enough highlight on kind of the upper left side of the helmet. So I'm extending that out. Again, I've got that lovely roadmap of that photo. So time to work on it and uh, adjust what I need to. Jumping ahead a bit here, and right here you can get a really good view of how I've started to work on that hard terminator. And you can look up in art theory, photography, whatever, the terminator is that really harsh, distinct line from a cast shadow. Again, that light is coming from the upper left, and because of the really sharp planes on that helmet, if I go back to the reference photo, you can see it very distinctively. There's a harsh shadow that comes across. And so I cut that in with some of that black and not trying to make a gentle transition there. This is one of the places you don't want the gentle transition. And aside from that, just going back and again, doing some more highlighting, uh, trying to work some more glazing. NMM is just a lot of this work. Results are worth it though. So here you'll notice that I've actually got a little bit of color in that dark black again. This came about from a painting chat live session I had with some pals on Paint Water Soup uh, Discord server. There's a link in the show notes. It's a free open Discord and oh my god there are some amazing people on there who are very generous and kind with feedback when you ask for it which is lovely. Anyway, we were on this paint chat and somebody, a couple folks suggested um, adding some color very dark into the blackest spots so that it's not pure black. I said, well, I keep bouncing back and forth, you know, give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? So I used a bit of AK Wine Red with some of that black that I had and I found I liked that quite a bit. You know, uh, this is part of why we practice. We experiment, try different things, get some feedback. And uh, I so I added in that color, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Again, those reference photos are critical. Go back to them regularly. Keep it on your phone, print it out, whatever. But I keep going back and forth with them to understand where I need to improve. Especially when you're practicing, these reference photos are a great help. I'm jumping ahead a fair amount here because it just didn't make sense for me to keep showing you hours of me glazing and transitioning, glazing and transitioning. Um, so you can see that I've extended out some of the uh, bright areas around the upper left side particularly where I just I didn't feel that I was matching my reference photos. And now I'm just trying to smooth things out. So I feel like I've got my volumes done pretty well. But now it's a mix of using some glazes and like light colors like the pastel yellow 
or white don't glaze well. So generally what I'm doing, you can't see it off to the palette to the side, but um, I'm using a bit of that lighter color and then the blue or some of the black and that's the glaze mix to try to smooth out some of that transition area. I'm also getting back into the uh, Terminator to try to make that a little clearer and a little more, uh, you know, contrasty, a bit more punchy. And this is also a point where I'm getting pretty happy with the front parts. And now I'm trying to get some of, sell some of the metallic idea back in some of the darker areas. So both on the shaded areas on the left side as well as going back to the right side. Again, using a light, using the reference material, these things are your friend. Just keep working at it, making small adjustments where you need. I'm doing a careful bit of work with pure black that I've thinned down and using some flow control flow improver and I'm getting that into the edges to really make them pop uh, one of the things about NMM is picking out some of these small shadow details so that it really makes the different surfaces and different shapes really pop out so you know good brush careful thinning uh, careful work and just picking out those lines to really make the areas stand out more <laughs> it again I didn't take this all the way there were specific things that I wanted to work on there were a number of things that I left off I didn't want to worry about reflections from the environment I didn't want to worry about secondary reflections for example this was about bringing in uh, harsh lighting this was worry working with those cast shadows and a hard terminator this was working on taking the next step and trying to smooth some of those transitions had a good time with this um, it was a really good practice piece which was the intent of uh, the folks that made this bust discipline practice focus breaking things down it's really critical regardless of whether you are learning piano or boxing or you know whatever learning how to do software development um i've nattered on enough here's the piece As usual, please do all the things. Hit subscribe if you're not already. That way you'll get notification when you when I drop the next video. Not you drop the next video. When I drop the next video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. But even more importantly, 
you know, I'm a small channel. I love hearing some feedback and comments about whether these things are resonating with you, like hearing about your own journey along the way. But at the end of the day, remember, be kind, go out and learn something, experiment and fool around. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. See you next time.